The sugar used to sweeten this favorite milk tea comes from the popular Pakistani gur or the traditional sugar produced from sugar cane that is locally done by the villagers around here. In English, gur means jaggery. A byproduct of sugar cane is squeezed by simple machinery, then bake it till it becomes gur or sugar. In a country where sugar cane sugar is an important source of income for the farming community, jaggery making or gunnery to these locals has remained a viable small-scale industry employing over 1.5 million people. When the month of December comes, farmers in Mardan and Swabi districts, two of the major sugarcane growing areas in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province, start their seasonal operations of gourd making by applying an age-old traditional process. For many of these sugarcane farmers, gourd making is a cost-effective and profitable option as compared to selling their crop to the sugar mill. A sugarcane farmer can earn up to 40 to 50 percent more than what he earns for selling his crop to the sugar millers. On top of this, gourd making saves them from the manipulation of the market forces, including the millers and middlemen or commission agents. Gourd making technically starts from the cutting of sugar canes, in most cases manually, early in the morning after cutting the cane. Its leaves are then removed and carried to a place near the juicing machine. There are at least two persons assigned for juicing the sugar cane. In the olden days, the process of extracting juice from the sugar cane was much more slower because it only depended upon human and animals' hard work alone. Today, these Chinese-made machine makes the job easier. These two rotating iron gears crush the sugar cane in between them that is fed through an inlet by these two mining workers. When the sugar cane is pressed by two colliding gears, its light green juice is then extracted and then flows down through that rubber pipe and then into that concrete basin where it goes through a hole that leads to a metal container on the other side of the room where the juice is temporarily stored for just few minutes before it will be poured into a huge baking pan. This 100 liter iron pool in rectangular form must first be filled to be able to produce a batch of sugar just enough for that white baking pan. As we can see here, on top of the stored juice in the pool, there is a dark element that pops out from the juice. Accordingly, these are impurities arising from the storage time from its extraction. If you skim this off, you will find the light green juice underneath below. It's now time to pour the stored juice into the big pan through that bike rubber valve made of tar interior tube. This huge pan measures about 10 feet in diameter. As soon as the juice gets to the pan, it has to be steered off by those big wooden shovels so that the juice will be equally heated up. After almost half an hour, some white bubbles pop up on top of the gourd and they are immediately removed and poured into a plastic container. This is because the taste of the sugar is affected if they are left to be cooked with the gourd or the sugar all together. Because they are removing the, the taste is different. If they can't remove the taste is terrible. That's why they remove because of the taste. In the course of the cooking of the gourd, it has to be constantly steered off so that it won't stick on the pan. 
Outside the gourmeting room are these scattered juice bushes and haze that are used to fuel the gourd cooking. The one in charge for this job of keeping up the fire burning is called a jogi. Right where he sits on, he pushes dried straws into that burning hole below the pan in the gourd making room. He controls the fire to intensify or slow down boiling density. Below the burning hole is a passage where the air can pass through to let the fire burn and where the charred straw drops down which would be raked out later when a pile of ashes begins to mount. Back in the gourd making room, in the next two and a half hours, the gourd gives its orange color and the fully filled pan will be just half filled while the boiling density will be slowed down. This gourd making process requires at least seven to eight people. They work from 5 o'clock in the morning until dark and sometimes until late at night. This job, however, is not available all year round. Gourd making starts in November and ends in February. These workers will have to find other jobs during off gur season. After almost a couple of hours, the gur is now caramelizing. It is now starting to cook a bit dark orange. At this very moment, the stirring of the gur is now getting even faster. As we can see now, the still caramelizing gur is now being transferred to another collecting ceramic pot. This is already the final stage. The gur is transferred when it is yet to cool down. The edge of the ceramic pot must be constantly scraped off so that the gur will not stick. The spooning of the gur must be made in a hurry so that it won't dry up before they could form it into a cricket ball sized sugar. After these people shall have turned the sugar into balls, it will only take them a few minutes before they can put them into those thick fiber bags. All across the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province in North Pakistan, it is estimated that there are more than 50,100 kilogram bags of gourd are produced for the market on a daily basis. Gourd makers complain of the prices of their gourd produce being regulated and do not go up, while the prices of the rest of the commodities have touched the sky. Meanwhile, Millers also complain that good quality of sugar cane is diverted to good making and they get low quality cane. This creates shortage in the cane market. When this happens, middlemen and the commission agents will exploit this opportunity to sell their stocks at inflated prices to the millers in the later part of the harvest season. The Pakistani gur or the traditional sugar has considerable demand for household consumption in the Pakhtun inhabited rural areas in Mardan, Suabi, and Charsadda districts. And given the fact that Pakistanis have a sweet tooth, the consumption of sugar in Pakistan is rising every year not only because of the country's rising population but also because of the fact that sugar is an important part of Pakistan's daily diet. That being said, the gur sugar is generally preferred over the white milled sugar in this KPK area because it is 100% pure and chemical free. Besides this, it also has many health benefits according to experts. Consuming right amount of gur can detox the liver, treats flu-like symptoms, relieves joint pain, controls blood pressure, and many more. Produced from sugarcane sugar constitutes Pakistan's second largest agro-based industry after textiles, ranking fifth in the world in cane acreage and ninth in sugar. This province of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa in Pakistan has thousands of miles covered with sugarcane crops. But many of this sugarcane 
may not make their way into sugar mill alone. Much of them will be juiced out by these local farmers to turn them into good or native sugar and would sell them in the local market.